Coming up, should you replace your carriage plate on your Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro? Maybe. Let's find out. Everybody, Chris Sargent Taz here, and today I'm going to go over replacing your standard Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro carriage plate with an upgrade from Gulf Coast Robotics. Um, I was granted the opportunity to get a discount, so I'm going to put that out right now. Um, I purchased from them anyways, so I came across this when I was looking through their website, and it was interesting, and I was offered to review it. Do the install video if I could and give you guys my impressions of what I thought when I was finished with it so right start off with what the weight difference is um, right here I have a little indicator at the postal scale so on your left hand side is the basic stock plate which is 8.7 grams and on the right is the kit with the screws and the extra third level adapter which come in at 7.9 grams um, it's a postal scale so it's fairly accurate um, obviously not a major weight difference but you know you decide so why was I actually doing this um, my main problem was since adding the glass plate on top of the magnetic surfaces I had I was having issues with it when it was riding back it would almost like you have too much momentum and slap no matter what setting I changed in the speed I still got a slap and it like almost like a crash I don't think it was a bad thing maybe just annoying more than anything so I was like well why not I saw this on their website well, not this one I saw the replacement on the website and I figured hey what the heck why not um, you know it gives me a chance to go through some mechanics see what's going on with with the way it's set up um, and also gave me a place to put a better handle and a better place for my GoPro camera to mount without having to use the um, the springs for your leveling as a place where your parts are gonna go like your handle or your camera attachment this actually on the on the newer plate if you let me go back to the weight side if you look at the newer plate you can see that there's actually additional drilled holes for that process so you can attach your handle and the GoPro to it and that gives you a little more versatility when you're working and playing I, I have it set up already and it's operating rather well so where do I go with this um, up next I'm gonna do the install portion of this kinda walk you through what I had to do um, keep in mind I did clear the plate off of the original magnetic layer and underneath the magnetic uh, underneath the magnetic layer is an additional film that keeps the screws in place I also did add my own additional M4 nuts to hold the screw the existing screws in place on the um, on the left hand side because they're kind of rattling inside there unless you put something on top of it like they did on the stock version so I added my own screws and nuts to make the leveling a little bit easier and not less fiddly I want to say less less you know it felt a little bit more secure so I added the M4 nuts on my own personal preference it doesn't come with the kit I did order the extra screw kit with it I think I believe it's still an option on their website I would order the additional screws because you, if you're gonna want to do the three-point leveling you want the shorter M4 bolts to make up for your uh, not having your two wheels you're only gonna have one on the opposite side to do welding so you can do three-point leveling which I thought was really interesting um, that does require that you make sure your heat bed is perfectly flat on that side um, if you have any warps or kinks in it 
you're probably going to have trouble with a three-point leveling system. I didn't have that issue. I did bend it back when I first got it. It was a little warped on one side, and I heated it up with a heat gun and physically bent it back to where I thought it should be. So my plate's relatively straight, so the three-point leveling system was ideal for what I wanted to do. So let's get into the install and see how that went. So I stated I removed everything already, including the springs and the wheels, just to make it simpler for the video. Um, pull the, I pulled the plate up and I skipped this portion in the instructions that they offer. I add, decided to add the uh, adapter for the, the third level while I was here, as opposed to at the end of the project. I want to get it out of the way. So I use the smaller screws that came that I ordered from the kit. You put those on the right hand side, right where the existing original ones used to go. This is your adapter. The uh, machine side accepts the longer screw that they give you with the screw kit that I got. That goes in there and then that goes flat against the hot plate. So you'll take that, place it over the shorter bolts. And then now you have that third level screw in the center where it belongs to fit the new carriage. Um, the lock washers are in the kit. I put those on with the M4 nuts, come over next, and secure it down. Um, I didn't show in the video, but I did tighten them down with a screwdriver just to make sure. I just skipped it in the video because you don't really need to watch it. Take my word, I tightened them down. I didn't go just hand tight. so. Now you just take this when you're done and put it behind the gantry and off to the side. Be careful of your wiring because it is connected. So make sure you are gentle when you put it back there. Don't just flip it back there and go nuts. Now we go to removing the eccentric nut side. As indicated in their instructions, I remove the eccentric wheels first. And I was using the supplied ender tools just to show that it, you don't need any specialty tools to do this. So I did it all with their Allen keys and their wrenches, except for the 10 millimeter wrench to adjust the eccentric nuts. I got a longer one just to make it easier on myself. So you pull the belt from the carriage. It's going to be stiff. I didn't loosen up the, um, the tension just because I figured I could get it out. Uh, and I figured I'd like to struggle a little bit and show that I, you know, did put an effort into making this work. The other side comes off relatively easy afterwards once your tension's gone. And now you make a note where your wheels are located on your base. Ender 3 Pro is going to be a wider extrusion, so it's going to go to the outsides, as I'm showing you right here. The inside ones are for the older Ender 3s. So make sure you remember that when you're putting it together. If you have an older Ender 3, you want to make note on your original plate where they were at. And then just copy that. Some of the older, older Ender 3s are going to have a problem, just so you're aware that the, the bolts are going to be shifted. This makes it more secure. So they're going to put the points, a four point system on each side. So it's actually going to do a better job of making your, uh, your carriage straight and more secure. So if you do upgrade to this, it's going to be a really good upgrade for a basic older Ender 3. Now to put the eccentric nuts back in place after I put the wheels on. And you can see I've added the handle and the camera mount already just for making it easier because I don't want to have to go back and remove the plate later and then put those on. I did it beforehand. Those use a, a M4 style uh, screw. So lining these up was a bit fiddly, um, but they're fiddly even on the stock ones. So you just gotta get them lined up properly and, and squared to the tube so that your carriage rolls 
freely but tight. So what I'm doing here is trying to feel where it, it's actually just getting to where it just touches the wheel to hold it in place. And I get that, that bolt actually tightened up. And then I'll come back and tighten the eccentric nuts up to make the plate stiff. So overall, not a, not a really tough process, more or less fiddly would, if you have big paws, it's a tight space to work with. So keep that in mind. Give yourself enough space to work. Here's where I use the 10 millimeter wrench, make it easier. Um, get a little bit long, a little longer length so you're not directly under the plate fighting it. And it went on nice and easy. I made sure it was tight. Did a double check. Make sure it wasn't binding anywhere. Uh, run it back and forth just to see. And then you can add your belt back on, which went on relatively simply. It was actually easier on the newer plate than it was on stock. I think there's a little more um, tolerance. So there's that. Um, you still obviously need a pair of needle nose pliers to get it back in. But fairly simple process overall. As indicated, check for the wobble or slack in the belt, make sure everything's tight. And now you can go back to putting your plate on. Here, I'll put the springs on and the cable relief that I was on there. Right. Here, I'm showing you to put the springs on. That'll keep that spring in place so that it makes it easy. You can take your hand off, you don't have to hold it. And then you hold that one on and place on your left hand side. Made sure that everything lined up properly. And put your other spring on and then center that into the hole on the three point level. And now you can add your leveling wheels back on. So you're going to only put three back on when you get to it. And if I could get my big nubs to work, I could get the wheels back on. One of these days, I'm going to get it. Honest, I promise. There it goes. Sorry, my left hand's a bit wonky, so. Get the other one on. I hold the weight down and just make it easier. And I remember, now you're going to do your third and final one. So you only have three wheels to put back on. So you're going to wind up with extra parts. An extra spring and an extra leveling knob. So, I ran it through. Double check the, the wobble and make sure the structure was moving freely but not tight but not too tight. The best thing to do is uh, run your fingers on the wheels. Hold it still, hold the plate steady and then run your fingers over the wheels and feel it, it, it should move with some tension. You should be able to hold it still and still be able to kind of slip the wheels a bit. And then we're going to go on to the glass surface placement. So this is the point where it's going to be different for everybody on this. Either you're going to replace it with your glass or you're going to try and replace your magnetic surface, which is going to be a little tough. 
because I had a tough time getting it off. If you get lucky and get it all off in one shot, you should be able to replace it. Um, but odds are, you're probably going to wind up going, wanting to go to glass eventually anyways. Now's the time I'd say get yourself some glass to put on there and roll with the process from there. You're already upgrading the bed. You might as well upgrade yourself to glass and get that out of the way. This is where you're going to manually adjust your Z-height. Don't automatically adjust it. You have no way of knowing for sure if you have the right height. So manually move it down and make sure you have the clearance. Here I'm going to double check my Z height and adjust my Z stop switch to make sure it's not crashing into my plate causing damage to my nice piece of glass or whatever surface you have. This way you know it's not dragging. So this is the best way to do it is to do it manually. Um, I like to manually level. Um, I prefer to set the height, disable my steppers, and then do an actual manual feel of where everything's at. So I'll take the sheet of paper and run, and now it's going to be more or less a three-point operation as opposed to all four corners. Now you can just use the one extra level screw versus the two corners. You can do it that way. I double checked because of the video. We wanted to make sure that it was leveling properly so I wasn't giving you guys bad information. So I did a four corner check on my level, but only manual, like I said, I did the three point leveling with it, which made it a lot faster and a lot easier. So I'm trying to get it in here to show you. There's a, your third point of level. If you've done this correctly, it should level both sides evenly and nicely. So I ran through, like I said, with the paper, double checked. Get my adjustment to where it's just giving me a little bit of tension on the paper. Not too much that it's like gripping it. I want enough that it slides easily. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I ran along the whole edge because it's the first time I've ever used a three-point leveling system. I wanted to make sure that my plate was evenly adjusted. So I have a little bit of back and forth tension just to try and get it nice and smooth. And overall, it looks pretty good. So then I'll go to my test print. to see if I, I did everything correctly. So, like I said, unfortunately, my camera mount was too short, so I had to make adjustments for now. I'm gonna make a different one when I get a chance. But I ran my first test, and it came out fairly good. I just thought it was a little bit too tight, so I didn't like how thin my line was coming out. So another run through, and then I ran a secondary level again to get to where I had a better print because the first one came out a little muddy wasn't happy with how it turned out and I ran with it so as I indicated the first pass was a bit off I didn't like the way it looked so I went to re-leveling it again and we're going for the second attempt which I could tell you right now, just from starting it out, I could tell exactly where I wanted it. It was nice, like a halfway smushed into the plate, halfway up above, just a nice bead. Very successful. A lot quicker than the four point leveling I had to do before. And from here is where I'm gonna show you pretty much how it turned out. So, this is my first layer print. That's the way I would like my first layers to be. Want to get it enough. But you get a little bit of thickness on your plate and it works out rather well. So overall, decent experience. I did print a couple of test cubes. Um, the first one came out a little funny 
at first. I had to do some adjustments. Um, this is my first one. The second one, I ran out of filament while testing. So that line that's in this cube is actually from my own mistake. Other than that, though, it came out nice and clean. I mean, it did come out really, really well. It's obviously a lighter color, so you, you kind of see it, it doesn't really ghost too bad. It, it's actually fairly decent. So, overall, I'm, I'm quite happy with um, the switch. I, I feel like the plate did a decent job, and it did it as described. Um, is it for you? Kind of your own personal preference. Um, if you don't feel you need it and you're happy with your your printer the way it is, not a total necessity but if you're like me and want to upgrade and have the very best of the best when you're working with something this would be something that's relatively inexpensive not hor horribly well it's not overly time consuming um, pretty simple to put together the instructions are really clear um, they did provide a link with the kit to an actual static page so you could look through and see it how you were going to put it together um they just asked me to do the video which i appreciate the opportunity um i hope you enjoyed what you saw uh, if you get a chance give me a like and subscribe i'd appreciate it and as always see ya